In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this, a tabletop level demonette, with as few paints and as few steps as possible. Alright, so the first step for painting our demonette is going to be an airbrush base coat. I've already undercoated this with Vallejo uh, airbrush primer, surface primer. Uh, this is their grey. The reason I use grey on most of the things that I paint is, well, it's more neutral than black or white, so black or white tends to affect the, uh, the first few layers more than a neutral grey will. So anyway, the first step is going to be an airbrush base coat with game color hexed lichen, lichen, I'm never gonna get that right. No matter what I call it, because I've called it different things in different videos and people seem to correct me every time. So I'm never gonna get that one right, but whatever it's called, we're using that one. So just an airbrush base coat, very thin, and this is a very, very opaque color. So we're only really gonna need one layer for this. The next layer, we're taking the exact same purple color from before and we're adding Vallejo Mecha colors off-white. Now this is a fairly drastic mix, it's about five parts of the off-white to the purple, but that's because the off-whites are much more translucent paint compared to the opaque purple, and obviously a deep purple is going to overpower a white a fair bit. So anyway, we want to get it to about, the camera will focus, about that color in your airbrush. Obviously this will darken a little bit once you've painted it on and it's actually dried, but we're just going to be slowly layering this up. So we're going to pretty much paint the majority of this miniature. Um, it will be slightly zenithal, but we want about, I'd say about 95% of coverage on the flesh. Okay, so for, for our next layer, we are going to be mixing Vallejo Mecha colors off-white in with our purple. Now, this is a much more translucent paint than the opaque purple, so it's actually a pretty aggressive mix. The purple is overpowering this color quite a bit, so I'd recommend airbrushing a fair few of these at once because you're probably going to be mixing more paint than you're gonna need to paint just one of these like I'm doing now, because this is roughly, I'd say about 20 parts of the Mecha color to one part purple. And this is how it'll look in your airbrush. So that's 20 white drops, one purple drop. And this is it sprayed on my hand a little as it's drying out. Again, just to make sure there's no dry paint on the end of my airbrush and we're going to get pretty much full coverage over in the entire model. Um, we only want one layer. These models are pretty finely detailed. Luckily, thanks to the Mecha color, this layer is reasonably translucent. So we're not gonna be too worried about obscuring any details, but if you don't have extremely fine control with your airbrush and how thick you're gonna be putting it on, um, especially if you don't have a dual action and you only have a single action airbrush, I'd recommend thinning this down a fair bit and maybe doing a couple of layers just to make sure you don't obscure any of the really fine details on this miniature. The next layer, once again, we're aggressively mixing that white in with the purple. So it's quite literally another 20 parts of white in with the one part of the previous mixture. So that's how it's gonna look in your airbrush if it'll actually focus, that'd be nice, there you go. So it's much more of a purpley off-white now, which is what we're really looking for for these miniatures. And that's how it's gonna look on your hand. And now we're really gonna go for a zenithal highlight. So top down, like this. Um, the camera's not wanting to focus on the model. I'm just gonna have to hold it lower. Um, yep, yeah, so top down, um, and that way, Obviously, think about how a shadow is cast. If a light source is directly above the model, it's obviously going to show shadows under details, like, say, nose, cheekbones, um, shoulders, bulges in muscles, that kind of thing. And that's what we're looking for to really give some definition to this miniature.
All right, so our next layer is pure Mecca color off-white. So obviously there it is in the airbrush. Just using a very minuscule amount. And same as before, just going for a zenithal highlight. Now we need to be careful, as you may have just seen on my hand, this is a more viscous, very translucent paint. It wasn't really a worry before because the hexed lichen is very thick, very opaque. So that mitigates that, but uh, I mean, if I do that, still, still not dry on my hands. So very careful with the application of the airbrush, just making sure to pick out the raised areas and just be careful with how we do it. So we don't want wet paint on the miniature. I'm actually gonna need a little bit more paint. And I'm nearly out of this paint, which is inconvenient. There we go. But making sure not to build too much of this paint up and then subsequently push that paint around the model, which would obviously be pushed into recesses and ruin the shadows and depth that we've created with the previous layers. Okay, so for the next step of the flesh, we're gonna step away from the airbrush a little bit and use a little bit of pinpoint washing. So what we're gonna use is a mixture between Games Workshop's Druchy Violet and Nuln Oil, as well as some airbrush thinner, but any thinner will do, because um, we don't want this to be overpowering at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a few drops of that airbrush thinner onto the palette just so we can control how much thinner we're going to be mixing with the washes. I'm going to get one, it's kind of hard on a wet palette to actually get the wash to stick, but that's about one brush load worth of Nuln and an equal part brush load full of Jirichi. I'm just going to mix those and then I'm going to slowly bring dinner over into it until it's very, very, very thin. Now, all I'm going to do is get a tiny bit of this stuff. We may do a couple of layers of this. The only reason I want it so thin is so I don't instantly overpower the flesh, especially given it's so, so light. And we're just gonna slowly brush this wash into some of the creases. So thinking things around the muscles, around ribs, joins, edging on um, the armor and tabards. Any way you can think of to add a little bit of recessed shade or at least a little bit of extra recessed shade because we already do have a reasonable amount from our zenithal highlights. Okay, now that we've shaded that a little bit, if I can actually get the model to focus, there we go. Um, we're gonna do just a little bit of transition around all of the scales and the claws because we're gonna end up darkening them, but I want there to be a little bit of a pink or a uh, magenta in between the really, really dark purple and the, the light purple flesh. So what I'm gonna be doing, once again, if it'll focus, camera is being really dumb today. No. There we go. Um, we're going to use this little card just to mask it off a bit. Actually make sure the paint's coming out of the airbrush. And I'm just going to add a transition there. And I should probably tell you which paint I'm using. So this is Game Color. Why is my camera being so stupid? It's wanting to focus on the background, that's why. Uh, game color Warlord Purple. And 
so that's that side of the claw done. This one's a little bit, actually I can probably do it like this and then just bend the card around. This is why I like using business cards. They're flexible and easy. I'm just gonna hold the airbrush really close and just be very careful with how much I spray. And then the underside, make sure I actually get the angle right with the camera. There you go. And yep, yeah, that's good. Now we need to do this arm, which is actually probably gonna be a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna do it like that, I think. And just be very careful with how we actually use the airbrush. And this side, I don't really need to bother because there's nothing behind there. And then just spray an outward angle so as I'm not over spraying on the model. Now, all I need to do is the scales on the shins. So, there you go, in focus. So I'm gonna angle the airbrush this way so as the spray is going this way so as I'm not gonna collect any on the, on the legs if I were to spray directly forward or or the other way. And be very careful doing this side. There you go. And then this one's not a problem because there's nothing behind that, so I'm just gonna go directly onto this leg. There you go. So now we're going back at it again with the airbrush. This time I've mixed the Hex Lichen with Vallejo Game Color Black. Uh, about one to four parts purple to black. So if I show you in the airbrush, I mean, you probably can't see because it pretty much just looks like black. Actually, if I put it against the white card, you'll be able to see. It's an extremely dark purple. So now we're just gonna hit the claws with that. And it's speckling a little because it's a little bit too thick, but that's okay. Because I'm going to cover the transition up with that little bracelet that she's got on. Obviously, if you want to avoid the speckling, just thin the paint a bit. Alright, so I've now mixed that same dark, dark purple just on my wet palette here. And now we're just gonna fill in these little scales on the thighs. If it's messy, that's okay. Because this will all be cleaned up with a wash. Our next step for the scales is just gonna be to layer it with some straight hetched lichen straight from the bottle. Um, just be careful with how much paint you use because it is a reasonably thick color, but I don't really want to thin it down and make it runny considering we're picking so many tiny, tiny little scales and I don't really want it to run into the recesses. We're also gonna do a quick blend on the edge of the claws, just because I want there to be a little bit of transition of color through them. Okay, now that we've given a quick blend to the claws and picked out the scales, we're gonna knock them back again with a wash of Drucci Violet straight from the pot. So just get a little bit on your brush and just put that in all of the scales and all over the claws. Alrighty, now that that wash has dried, I've mixed a little bit of the same purple now with some Vallejo Game Color Wolf Grey. So this has created this really light, pale, uh, pallid, pinky purple. And now I'm just gonna get a little bit on my brush and I'm just gonna edge highlight the claws and pick out those tiny, tiny little scales. All right, so I actually forgot to press record on the last step but it's nothing that exciting so 
I don't even really feel that bad about it. All you need to do is base coat the tabard and the little horns sticking out of her, the toes, and I guess the little claws inside the little club crap clap there. Crab claws. This is what I get for recording videos early in the morning. Um, with Vallejo game color black. I've also been driven insane by the autofocus on this camera wanting to pick up all the background so it's just on manual now so I'm gonna have to remember to hold the model exactly this close to the camera. So the next step we're gonna work on the tab art a bit so for that we're using model color German grey. So we'll get a little bit of that on the palette. And get a little bit of water. Just one drop will do for this much. Mix that up. There we go. Alright, so remembering to hold it this close. Get some of that German grey. And I'm just gonna focus on the middle. Just kind of Bring that grey out. It's very hard to see because I have thinned it down and it's already a very, very dark grey. But we'll give the tabard a little bit of transition in its black. Because I don't actually, other than a little bit of edge highlighting, I don't want to bring this up too much because I'm actually going to freehand a little slanesh. For this step, I've gotten some of the intermediate blue from before. I'm going to get a little bit of that on our fine detail brush and we're just going to pick out the edges of all of the little horns and claws. So, like this one on her, go all the way around. This one on her foot. Need to hold the model in the right place. The uh, little claws inside the claw, we're going to pick all of those out. Of course, you don't have to do these claws like this. I was also contemplating painting them in bone, but I don't think that would have looked as good contrasting on the skin. So I'm content with just highlighting these with a light gray inside the claws and having them stand out like that. Okay, so now that that's done, we're basically gonna do the same thing, but just push the highlight a little bit further, and for this I'm using game color Ghost Gray. And the reason I'm using this is it's pretty much the lightest gray that I have. And of course, I mean, all of these are, at the end of the day, just grays. You can interchange them. I think the equivalents for Games Workshop would probably be, I don't know, one of the Space Wolf grays. I think the darker, bluey gray is, the fang or something along those lines and I know the equivalent to a color like this would be Ulthwin gray so they're easily interchangeable if Games Workshop are the only paints you have all right so now we've got to do the armor pieces so I want these to be reasonably dark to contrast with the light skin so I'm using Vallejo's metal color steel and we're just gonna base coat that on all of our little armor plates All right, now that we've done that, we're gonna go straight on with some model metallic air aluminium. And we're just kind of messily highlight slash blend over all of the armor plates. When it comes to quick paint jobs like this, I like to, I like to do these highlights before I actually wash the metals. Um, basically it just means you can do it quickly you can be a little bit more sloppy with it uh, and you can kind of use the wash as if you you would use a glaze when it comes to blending to kind of hide any mistakes and tie everything together a bit All right. 
Alrighty, so I'm now going to hit the metals with a wash. I'm going to use basically my favorite wash ever. It's what I use for a lot of things and you'll see it in just about every single tutorial that I make. It's kind of a... It's like the old Games Workshop Delves in Mud. Um, it's a mixture between um, f three parts. My brain's not working at all. It's one part Agrax Earthshade, one part Vallejo Game Color Black Ink, or Black Wash, I think it's called, and a medium. Any medium will do. Vallejo has a good one, which is the one that I use, but you can always also use Games Workshop's Lamian Medium. And it's a nice black brown wash that's very multifaceted. And the reason I'm using a brown wash is I want a little bit of warmth somewhere on this model. So we're just gonna add that little brown tone into the metals to achieve that. So off camera, I just dotted the eyes with black um, and now I'm going to give them the tiniest, tiniest little highlight with that wolf grey that's still on my wet palette. Just a little speck of that in the eye. There you go. Now she's got nice dead eyes. And the last thing we really need to do is the hair. Now we can leave it as is. Did hit it with a couple of layers of that thin down wash, but I want it to separate from the skin a little bit because it is still the same color. So I'm going to base coat it with, I can find where I put it, um, Vallejo Game Air Squid Pink. Pretty much the same color as Game Color Squid Pink, so you can use either. And I'm just gonna Go over all of her hair. Luckily caught myself before it's too late. Uh, we need to wash the hair. So I'm just using Drucci Violet straight from the pot. Now, if you notice something with this, color scheme um, this is essentially how to paint a demonette as quickly and easily as possible so I'm trying to reuse the same colors as much as possible and kind of preparing for that in the way that I'm painting things so there we go we've washed the hair leave that to dry and then we'll get to the next step alrighty so our wash has dried now we're going to take that same squid pink from our palette and I'm just going to run it kind of sideways across the model. Same way as you do an edge highlight just to pick out the raised areas of all the hair. All right, for the final step on this hair, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time with, uh, not Vallejo, P3's Carnal Pink. So you can get the same effect with taking that squid pink and just mixing it with white, essentially, until you get a color about like that. I'll put it there. It's pretty much white. Um, and I'm just taking this straight from the pot because this pot's actually already pre-thinned. So, once again, just, it's kind of awkward with the camera. Well, it might be easier to do this side. Um, once again, same thing, just running the brush sideways and highlighting all those different strands of hair. So, because I'm destined to, well not destined, desperate to ruin this model, uh, I've decided to do a little bit of freehand on the tabard because it's pretty bland. Um, 
So looking at the Slanesh symbol, it looks like a pain in the ass because there's a circle there. So I guess we'll start with that. And that way if I muck that up, I can just go over it. So we're starting with game color, not Vallejo purple, Warlord purple. And we're just gonna make a circle. Alright, so I added some off-white to the wall of purple purely because I would use squid pink, but the squid pink that I have is a bit too viscous. So hopefully this doesn't turn out too bad. There's actually a good little bead that formed on the end of the brush there. Um, because as you guys won't be able to tell, this is not the position that I would usually hold a model to paint it. So painting it on camera like this is actually very, very awkward. So, now that we've done all of those steps, the demonette's done, and we have our tabletop demonette. Now just pump out another 40 of these and you have a solid core for your Slanesh Demon Army. Hopefully you guys found this at least somewhat helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.